Hi everybody, I'm Kim Bourgeois Landry and I'm the Wonky Quilter. I've just gotten back from International Quilt Festival. It was a blast. You have to go. You just have to have an opportunity to go. If there's any way that you can do it, if you can afford the time and afford it financially, the things that you can learn at Quilt Festival beyond the pale. Let me just tell you that. Today, I haven't unpacked my bags in all kind of ways. I'm having a little cup of tea. I might have a little tea for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have any tea. Nothing dramatic happened. I mean, all kind of dramatic things happened when I learned stuff, but nothing, you know, scandalous happened. Um, but... You know, I did learn some interesting things that nobody ever told me about. When I was putting myself together to go to festival, I just thought, I have uh, food allergies. Like, I have celiac disease. Not so much fun, but, you know, manageable. It's a manageable thing. No wheat, rye, barley, or oats. So it's very difficult for me to eat at a coffee shop. It's very difficult for me to grab and go. There's always like a burger place or a chicken fried chicken place or whatever, but it's not a place where it's safe for me to eat. Not that I don't want to, because let me tell you, I passed up this, a bunch of Chick-fil-A booths. Smelled amazing, do you know? Um, I did eat a salad a couple of days from uh, La, Madeleine, La Madeleine, I believe. Um, a salad that had a little, a little bowl of chicken that came with it. You picked up the salad in a container about this big. And it was beautiful. It was fresh, crisp. But it was not huge or anything. I think it had some um, cranberries on it that tasted kind of nice. And a little sprinkle of cheese. And a little cup of meat, chicken, grilled chicken that was about this big. And I got that and a cup of tea, you know, out of a squish deal, not like, um, you know, a tea in a bottle that you had to open. And it was 20 bucks. Okay, so what nobody told me is how wonderful the luncheon lectures were. Because I have food allergies, I went ahead and booked several of them. They were very expensive. The least expensive one was $35. It was the first day. And that was a grilled chicken salad. It was a beautiful plate. And they had a, a big tub of bread. And they actually had um, Parmesan cheese crisps, which means that they just have put shredded cheese, Parmesan on, you know, I don't know, the griddle. And it gets real crisp, so you can eat that with this, with your salad as a cracker. But they had all that sitting on top of the bread, so I couldn't eat it. But and they had amazing desserts, and they had coffee and cold tea and water at the table. And then you get a wonderful lecture. The first day was, who was the first day? It was about feed sack quilts which is right up my alley. Do you see this here? I'm all into the vintage stuff. So that's why I, I went ahead and did that. And it was a woman um, with Cotton and Thrift. Oh, well, Marianne Montgomery, I think is her name. She was a very good, she was very knowledgeable. I think she runs a, um, a quilt museum, or maybe it's a textile museum. Um, and it was very interesting. I made friends with three people. The table sits eight. But you have enough time. It's a two-hour luncheon lecture. So you have enough time over eating a little of your salad and waiting for the speaker to start the first half hour. Um, nothing at all. Or the first hour might have been food. And the second hour was dessert, coffee, and the lecture. There's something around that area, okay? So that was like 38 or whatever, 38 bucks. So worth it. I had a seat that belonged to me. I had two hours to rest. I met other quilters. I happened to be sitting next to <laughs> this beautiful lady and I was like, are you a quilter? And she was like, oh, uh, 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 yes, I quilt. And I was like, well, what's your motif? What's your favorite thing? And she said, um, found fabrics. I make art out of found fabrics. And I was like, oh, that's my kind of cup of tea too. I, 
I like to vintage uh, vintage scraps and da da. So we kind of connected right there. I told her that I had um, been fortunate enough to study with the Jeeds Bin quilters, and she just went like, "What?" So I left my little business card. Mm hmm. I have a little business card. It says the Wonky Quilter, quilting for process and not product. Mm hmm. That's what it says. Anyway, I handed her that with the information for the Alabama Folk School, which is where I studied with them one time. Um, and, uh, you know, the website that she could get to them on. Well, it turns out that she's a fabulous, fabulous artist who is hanging internationally. Who knew? But every day that I sat down for that luncheon at, you know, 38 to 40 one or $42 for lunch is expensive, but $20 for just a salad and then you have to find a seat to sit down with all of your paraphernalia. You're carrying a purse, you're carrying a tote, you're carrying probably another tote with all kind of things in it for the class that you're taking after lunch and you're looking for a place to sit. I walk into, I showed him a little tag, I walked into the luncheon, you find a seat, there are plenty of seats, someone serves you, you eat, they take your plate away, they give you a, I couldn't eat the dessert. Okay, that's my only, like, aggravation about this, is that I put that I needed a gluten-free meal, and, and I got one, but they didn't provide me with a dessert. I wanted a dessert too. <laughs> their desserts looked so so amazing, you know, with a big blob of cream and, you know, ooh, all kind of good it's chocolate sprinkles on them and a strawberry and a this and a that. And, you know, um, it was lovely. Before I left, I had a, I filled up my to-go cup, my coffee cup with coffee that nobody else was drinking. And I was ready to go for the afternoon without having to stop at uh, Starbucks or anything. Starbucks did a great job. Every time I went to Starbucks, there was like, a three level line and they went through it so quickly and they were friendly and their products were good. So I will say that. Um, and all the food in um, the George R. Brown Center was tasty. Everybody said the food that they bought was good. I just think somebody should have told me. I lucked into this because I had food allergies. Out of the five days, I went to three, three. And if I had it to do over again, I would go all five days, all five days. Every day you sit next to, I was by myself. I was traveling with a quilter who was taking different classes. She's a long armor. I'm a hand quilter. So we were, we traveled together, but we didn't do the show together. We didn't do the classes together. So every day I sat by different people. I exchanged information, um, contact information. I connected with people by Instagram, by, you know, Facebook, by Snapchat, all that stuff. Um, with the most amazing people that I would have never had the opportunity to meet and listen to some great lectures. And it was two hours of sort of reprogramming. Like, I, I noticed I'm sitting around and I'm eating like this. That's how I've been moving all day. And all of the other, one day I was sitting all with Texans and I'm sorry, you can't rush a Texan. Those women, they know all of the, the best table manners. They are just calm, cool and collected. They're in their home state. And you'd say, where are you from? And they'd say, well, I'm from Texas, honey. Well, I'm from here in Houston. I'm from Dallas. I'm from, you know, wherever. They were just so lovely. I loved all the Texas women that I got to meet. Um, and I was able to really see how quickly I was moving and start to slow down. So Monday was um, just a pleasure, just a pleasure. That's all this, is, this first video is gonna be about is my lunch because I didn't, nobody ever told me that was a huge, I was learning something about quilting. I was having a really nice catered meal, not just a quick run-in meal. And I got to meet really extraordinary quilters that were going to these things. Um, the next one I went to was, oh, that was 
Monday, Tuesday, I went to see Judith Baker Montano and she was talking about the influence of Victorian crazy quilts and how they continue to play a role in quilts and in garments. I mean, just in the last couple of years, we've seen so many, um, you know, stars and influencer people wearing fabrics that were made out of um, crazy quilt fabrics, do you know? So that was very interesting and because again, I'm interested in old quilts and old, um, maybe some older techniques because the crazy quilt technique, I'm all up about that. And it was so uh, fresh and vibrant and I kind of think crazy quilts are fixing to like blow and go. I really, really do. There is something about um, the, the craziness of it and the freeness that you see in it where these women were just sewing a line wherever they wanted to sew it. Um, they weren't looking to follow a path of the girl in front of them. They weren't looking to lead the girl behind them. They were going their own direction. They changed their, they put their most beautiful stitches. It was almost a little bit scandalous. Some of the fabrics and the stitching and the really, it reminds me of um, back in Victorian times of a woman who was gonna show her ankles. Do you know what I'm saying? She's just a little bit rebellious. That's how they feel to me. I totally enjoyed hearing this woman speak and um, I would have liked to have had two more hours with her to tell you the truth. It was awesome, awesome. Wednesday was the IQA winners. So all of the people who won awards at this show, the International Quilt Festival of 2019, were being presented at this show. And um, there were talks, I think, by Jennifer Keltner um, and the, maybe a couple of the top winners. It was, it was mind-blowing, the art that was on display. That's all I can say. These quilts that were in the competition were beyond the pale. I mean, art on high is all I can say. Um, it was really wonderful. I didn't. I did not get to go to that lecture, but that was one of the days I put as a shopping day on Wednesday. That was a huge fail. <sighs> huge fail is that I took Wednesday off to be my shopping day downstairs at festival to shop for fat fabrics, um, notions, I'm a tool freak, notions, um, scissors, I was looking for partic a particular brand of scissors that I keep hearing about for English paper piecing, and I found those. Um, but I took the whole day off Wednesday, and you know what? The festival floor, the sales floor did not open until five o'clock and open only for the um, the faculty, people teaching and the people taking classes, which we were those people. But I had the whole day Wednesday off. So I booked some more classes. I just pulled money out of my pocket and was able to take a couple other classes, which I will tell you about. I'm going to do these little videos here and there, do you know? Um, but today I just wanted to talk about the power. I don't know why I always use the word power. The awesomeness of even though they're $40 a day, when you think about what you're gonna spend on your meals and what you're gonna get, and then having to find a spot to sit down, if you were already saving money for your, wherever you stay, your hotel, your Airbnb, that's what we did, we stayed in an Airbnb, not right in the area of um, the festival. We stayed in the medical district where the rent was not as high. We stayed in a nice, a lovely apartment. We had to walk up three floors. Uh, okay, that was not my favorite part, but everything else was my favorite part about the place we stayed. And it was really easy to get to. It took us 15 minutes to get in, no traffic. But I would mark my lunches. I would just say it's gonna cost me 
like next year, maybe it'll be 42 or $43, but I would go to a luncheon every single day because, I mean, there's nothing like having a seat for yourself and a nice, and a nice meal when you've been running between classes. I book two classes every day, a morning class from nine to noon, a luncheon from noon to two, and an afternoon class from two to five. Every day but Wednesday. I was exhausted, okay? I mean, there's only so much information you can put in your head. <laughs> so, um, uh, let's see, Thursday, the class was by Kimberly Inimo, um, who is, I think, a Japanese quilter. I didn't get to go to that one. Explore. She was, her talk was on exploring her own personal journey and other detours. Other quilting, exploring my quilting journey and other detours. And it says here that she is a master of fabric placement. So I'm really, I would have liked to have gone, I would have liked to have heard her talk. But I have a feeling I'm going to get to study with this lady. Every time I see her name, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. E-I-N-M-O, N-M-O, Kimberly N-M-O. And I feel a, like a recognition, and it's not because my name is Kim either. Every time I see something written, I'm like, oh yeah, she's my teacher that I don't know yet. I kind of get that feeling. So um, she's really known for how she, uh, the unusual way in which she places fabric um, and block placement. So, and she has a really fresh perspective. So hopefully I'll get to study with her one day, do you know? And Friday w was about the two women um, who started the International Quilt Festival. And these were two ladies who had collected quilts and sold them. Do you know, it was like their business. Anyway, that was on Friday. Um, if I get to go again, it probably won't be next year because it's an expensive thing and it's exhausting. You know, we took off a week. Okay, I don't have a job, but I took off a week of all kind of things. And, um, but if I go again, I will count my $40 lunch. And, and I would much rather have a $40 lunch and sit down with people that I don't even know and take that as an opportunity to um, enlarge my territory. Do you know, to meet new people, I mean, People from all types of countries was I, I sitting with. It was just so interesting to hear what drew people here and how far they had come and people talking about their children and their quilts and their art and their jobs. And it was just the, a very interesting two hours that I wasn't expecting to be so interesting. I was kind of going to them and with a grumble, like, I know I won't be able to eat any Chick-fil-A or none. I might as well go this you know, whatever, get some stuffy chicken and mashed potatoes, and it was delicious food, I'm going to tell you. They did an excellent job with their food. So that is the tea right here. Look, I didn't even take a sip. Let me take a sip real quick before we go. Lemon senior. Mm. Now, if you get to go, save up $40 every day, and go to the luncheon lecture. Plan that out. And you will not be disappointed. Knowledge, really good food, a seat. Oh, and guess what? You're in a big um, ballroom and the restrooms are right outside the door. That's a thing. This is a big building. You want to go to a bathroom? You're going to walk two blocks to get to it. It's going to be clean. It's going to be fresh. You're not going to have to wait in line two blocks to get to it, felt like. So everything about the luncheons was really wonderful, except no dessert for a gluten-free girl, you know. Um, but put that on there. This is a tip somebody should have told everybody. Everybody should know this. So please subscribe to my channel. I mean, if you want to, but it would help a girl, you know. I got 50 subscribers now. I'm really pleased about it. I'm Kim Bourgeois Landry. I'm the wonky quilter. And next time, I will start talking um, about my individual classes. And I had two every single day, except for Wednesday. And then I did book a class on Wednesday. So, you know, I booked two classes on Wednesday. A class and a lecture on Wednesday. So, I mean... 
I was full up. I've got stuff to tell you guys, okay? We'll see you next time. Kim Bourgeois Landry, go to my YouTube page and subscribe, like, leave me a comment. My um, email is the wonky quilter, T H E W O N K Y Q U I L T E R at gmail.com. So send me an email and let me know what you want to hear about. Okay, see ya. Bye.